Today I'm gonna to share with you my top four favorite methods for improving your mind-muscle connection. What's going on everybody? How you doing? It's Blake Bowman here with Gorilla Zen Fitness and in today's video I'm gonna be sharing with you my top four favorite methods for enhancing the mind-muscle connection. Before we actually start this video, we need to define what it is that we're talking about. So when we say mind-muscle connection, this term generally refers to the capacity of your nervous system to communicate with your muscles and tell them to turn on. We all already have this mind-muscle connection. It's what allows us to move our body and skeletal system around using our muscles. However, when you're combating muscle imbalances or you're really striving to have optimal muscle growth and muscular development, you might find that certain muscle fibers are underactive in your body and they're not turning on and contracting at optimal capacity. If you don't have optimal mind-muscle connection with a muscle or group of muscles, that's a very easy recipe for that muscle or group of muscles to become underactive and weak. Have you ever done an exercise and you didn't feel the exercise in the right muscles that you're supposed to feel it in? If you have ever said that to yourself, then likely part of what you're dealing with is a poor mind-muscle connection, right? In other words, your capacity to use your nervous system to tell that muscle or that group of muscles to turn on is diminished and the capacity is simply not there. This is exactly what I'll be talking about in today's video, so with no further ado, let's get into it. The number one first thing that you can do to enhance your mind-muscle connection with any muscle or group of muscles is to do muscle activation techniques. Essentially, what muscle activations are, they're usually isolation exercises, okay, with a very specific focus and intention on lighting up certain muscle fibers and causing them to contract. Like I said earlier, when you have a poor mind-muscle connection, your capacity to do this is going to be diminished. You're going to have a hard time feeling your muscles. You're going to have poor control over those muscles, and you're not effectively going to be able to turn them on and get them to squeeze and contract when you want them to. The fix is to do muscle activations, which, like I said, are short, typically controlled, very specific isolation movements that activate the right muscle groups and individual muscles. It's important that you do activations like this with little to no weight, okay? What we're really trying to do is work on the neuromuscular system here. We're not trying to, you know, really train for hypertrophy, which is muscle volume and size. We're just trying to get and trying to facilitate the, the mind and the nervous system to communicate with that muscle. Over time, when you get a muscle to contract by doing isolation exercises, muscle activations, okay, and you, you're able to gradually start to get it to turn on and contract, what that's going to do is it's going to cause the nerves that innervate that muscle to become more myelinated, which basically means they'll become thicker and more conductive, which is how your body actually facilitates and develops that mind-muscle connection. When you have a poor mind-muscle connection, the nerves that innervate the muscle that basically the nerves that connect that muscle to your brain, they're gonna be small, really thin. There's not gonna be a big myelin sheath on them and they're not gonna be very conductive, okay? Therefore, that signal from your brain that's being sent down through your nervous system is just not making its way into the muscle. You know, the nerves will actually adapt to activations pretty quickly. It takes about two weeks for them to start thickening and becoming more conductive uh, as a result of doing activation techniques. Now I've shown many activation exercises for the glutes and the ankles on my channel here. So I'm not gonna go too much deeper into activations. If you want me to make more videos on muscle activation techniques, then let me know in the comment section down below and I'll be sure to get to those. The second thing we have to talk about is palpation, which essentially refers to giving your body some feedback specifically in the region that you want to turn on and contract. So it synergizes very well with the activations. Basically, in between sets, you want to kind of rapidly poke the muscle fibers that you're trying to activate. What this will do is it will help your body tune in with that area and it will help the mind-muscle connection just basically develop. This has been used for years by people in sports rehab, physical therapists, stuff like that. Uh, and it's a proven technique. Basically, poking the muscle or having it poked by your training partner or something like that repeatedly as you're training the muscle helps you contract that muscle. And the more we can get that muscle to contract, the more we're going to be facilitating an increase in that neuromuscular connection. Again, the, the nerves that innervate it are gonna become more myelinated and thick, okay? So 
it's not always easy to palpate yourself when you're doing an exercise, right? If you're doing bench press, for example, both of your arms are occupied by, you know, performing the lift and you can't really do this. However, for other exercises, hip bridges, uh, when you're doing side planks and things like that, really trying to light up your obliques, you can easily palpate yourself here. Um, you can also, if you have a training partner, have them palpate you, right? Poke you kind of rapidly. Maybe you're doing rows and you know that you're a little bit underactive in between the shoulder blades, which is a common you know, area of weakness, the scapular retractors, the middle traps, lower traps, rhomboids, et cetera. Maybe you're doing rows that day and you wanna get a little bit of extra contraction back there. You can have your training partner simply just kind of like tap that area really quickly over and over again at like this speed right here. And you'll get a lot of benefit from that because like I said, it'll give your body feedback. It'll help you develop that mind-muscle connection in the area that you're palpating in this way. The third thing to focus on is having optimal electrolyte and mineral status in your body. Without getting too lost in the weeds here, your muscular system needs a proper balance of both electrolytes and minerals in order for the muscles to contract and function properly. If you're severely deficient and depleted in electrolytes or minerals or both, your muscles are gonna be weaker. You're gonna have an incapacity to actually get them to contract and fire and they're gonna become you know, basically weak. I'll tell you a firsthand account of what it's like to be stripped of your minerals and electrolytes. When I was in high school, I was a wrestler. And I don't know if you're familiar with the sport of wrestling, but it's a weight class based sport. So wrestlers are always cutting weight, right? Their water weight, they're sweating a lot and trying to get their weight down for weigh-ins. And this is just typically part of the sport, right? So you dehydrate yourself the day of the weigh-ins, you know, you sweat a lot at practice. It's not good for you, arguably, it's, it's really not good. Uh, however, what's if you're gonna do that, what is important is you replenishing your hydration, specifically through, you know, restoring minerals and electrolytes back into your diet, uh, following the weight cutting, all right? And all throughout high school, that's not something I did. We had a reverse osmosis water filtration system at my house ever since I was a little boy, which is the best method of water filtration, but it removes everything from the water. All of the electrolytes and minerals are stripped from it as well, and the water is essentially dead. So I would cut weight at wrestling practice, lose all of this water weight, sweat out like almost 10 pounds of, of water. Uh, over the span of two days. I do this every single week. And then I would try to rehydrate myself with just all this reverse osmosis water with no electrolytes or minerals in it. And what that will do, if you drink dead water like that, is it strips whatever remaining electrolytes and minerals that you have that your body was able to hold on to. It strips those right out and leaves you with like literally nothing, like a blank slate. So for years in wrestling, <laughs> I would cut weight and then drink all this reverse osmosis water and just feel horrible. I would never feel adequately hydrated even after doing that. And my muscles were extremely weak, all right? My muscle contractions, I couldn't get like a good contraction. I just felt weak the like the entire wrestling season, all right? And if I knew what I knew now then about, you know, the importance of electrolytes and minerals, I definitely would not have done things that way. But I know firsthand what this can do to your performance when you're deficient in these things. And that's kind of what it feels like. Your, your muscles just can't squeeze, they can't contract, and you're just generally weak. So having said that, there's a lot of fancy sports supplements out there and popular sports drinks that can replenish some of your electrolytes and your minerals back to you, Gatorade, things like that. Uh, even more expensive like mineral supplements. And these are all viable options, but what I like to do is simply use sea salt, all right? Celtic sea salt. Um, sea salt is gonna give your body all of the electrolytes that you need, and it's also gonna restore and provide you with over 70 trace minerals as well, all right? So basically, don't be afraid to use salt. And, you know, sea salt your food. Table salt is a lot different than sea salt, by the way. Uh, sea salt's good, table salt, bad, all right? So stick with the sea salt, salt your food extra, and if you're somebody that's an athlete, somebody that's sweating a lot, and really, you, you know, burning through a lot of your electrolytes, you're losing, you're experiencing a lot of electrolyte loss, you use saunas, you, you train hard, then you should even consider adding sea salt to your water, okay? Just a small pinch of sea salt, all right? Not so much so that it makes it taste super salty like salt water. A small pinch can really go a long way, uh, especially if you're salting your food as well in order to help you restore optimal electrolyte and mineral balance. To wrap up number three here, just remember, if your muscles aren't able to contract because they they don't have enough electrolytes to facilitate this happening, all of the activation and palpation that you're doing is really not gonna be too efficacious, right? 
You need to do all of these things together. The last thing that I want to make you aware of is a medicinal mushroom called lion's mane. All right, this is something that I personally go out and forage in the woods. It grows a lot here by me. But what makes this mushroom uh, particularly interesting is extracts of it promote something called dendrite outgrowth. Okay, dendrites are little hair-like projections that come off of the end of nerves. All right, and what supplementation with lion's mane mushroom has been found to do is it promotes dendrite outgrowth. So essentially creation of new neurological tissue. As we've been explaining kind of this whole time, the mind muscle connection really comes down to the neurons, all right? The nervous system and its capacity to communicate to your, your, your brain and your muscles, right? It's the highway that connects these things, okay? And if you can be taking a, a, you know, a mushroom extract that helps to facilitate more dendrite outgrowth, okay, new growth of neurological tissue, this simply helps to assist in the mind-muscle connection as well as learning anything new, right? Learning a new movement pattern, acquiring new skills, reading a book, things like that. All of these are enhanced by this same mechanism, which is the dendrite outgrowth. So yeah, I just really wanted to say that, include that as kind of a bonus one here on today's list. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, let me know down below. Give me a like on this video. I'm uploading here on YouTube once a week again. So really trying to build YouTube back up again. Come at you guys with fresh content every week. Follow me on Instagram if you're not doing that yet. And if you really enjoyed this video and you want to kind of explore more kind of strange, esoteric biohacking stuff, interesting health hacks, how to use sound waves to change your brain waves, things like that then check out my free guide called Holistic Health Hacks, all right? I'm gonna put a link to this in the description down below, so just click that if you wanna get this. This is basically a guide where I teach you all sorts of esoteric, not, things that are not known by a lot of people, health hacks, okay, biohacks, how to decode your genetics, use sound waves to change your brain waves, light therapy devices, stuff like that. I kinda go over a lot of this in this guide, and I think you'll get a lot of value from it. So if you wanna see that, click the link down below. That will take you over to my website. As soon as you get there, I'll ask you for your email, and once you enter in your email, I'll send you a copy of that guide within five minutes. If you're looking for another place to get that free guide, you can click this button right up here. That will take you to the same spot on my website. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and do that over there somewhere. And if you wanna see another video similar to this one, check this out over here. Like I said too, guys, comment down below. Let me know what you want me to make a video on in the future, and we'll see you next time.